What's going on guys, Jay Working Cust here, and welcome to Inside the Mind of Kenny S. And this is just going to be a new series that I'm doing that's going to be Inside the Mind of every single pro, well not every single pro, but it's just going to be a demo review series where I'm going through uh, exactly why they make certain decisions in their game. And so this was from the EPL Finals, this is going to be Game 1, it's on cash, and as you can see it's the first match of the Best of 5 series. This was both a close map and Kenny S performed really well on it, so I decided to show off how he does such a good job, uh, especially opping. So let's just jump right into this so g2 decided to do a mid stack here they decided to play two sandbags since he got smoked out my guess is kenny s was going to play in z but since he got smoked out he's going to end up baiting uh his teammate here i'm not too sure exactly who it is the numbers aren't appearing on the map but he's just going to end up baiting his teammate here and going for the kill uh afterwards because even if they double peek there's really not too much they can do so here he's hiding He's getting ready to peek. He just misses those two shots right there and ends up going down. It should have been an easy kill for him in theory. That should have worked. But it ends up just going into a 2v2. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip past this. And as you can see, G2 actually wins the round. And so here, Kenny actually decides to buy a FAMAS second round. Which is pretty interesting. I noticed a lot of people this game were buying uh, FAMAS instead of the more popular UMP for second round buys. Uh... I guess it's because they know that the terrorists are going to be full eco here and that they're going to most likely going to be buying AKs in the third round. So this was a smart prediction from them. And then if the T's decided to force with the Lil's, the t CT's would still have an advantage. And I'm actually going to skip back here. I got a little bit sidetracked on that part. But they go for an aggressive push to get info here. As you can see, they leave only one player at B and he's being super passive. And uh, Apex is going to flash him and... I believe it's shocks in or not shocks excuse me uh nbk and so they both turn around notice how the flash is being thrown from outside of uh or near truck and this allows them to have plenty of time to turn around and actually be in a main before the terrorists are right up on them it's a perfect pop flash that won't blind them and it also goes deep enough to blind people behind the box which is why nbk is easy to get those easy kills and notice how when NBK is clearing the box, Kenny S is holding this angle here. He's making sure that his teammate isn't going to get peeked and killed from there. And he's not over committing to the box because he trusts his teammate to get that kill. And that's something really important that comes with good team coordination. That you know what specifically each person is covering. And I doubt they even had to communicate this. It was just, you're the first person in, you're clearing the box while I'm holding your door. And that's kind of something that people should know at this point. So the flash in, he manages to avoid it. He does get kind of stuck in the open there. I would have liked to see him either fall back a little bit more or go towards locker. He didn't really have time to get to locker. So he probably shouldn't have fallen back. He knew he was already low on ammo. They didn't have control of the bomb yet. The bomb is just about to get dropped. So like AZ has control of it right now. So there was no reason to go super aggressive. He knows that they're on a full Glock save. It kind of seemed like he was almost a little bit kill hungry there. But uh, honestly, not too big of a deal. He does end up going down and losing the FAMAS, and it's actually not going to get picked up by Shoxy. So here, Kenny is really kind of fucked in terms of money because he died there. And so, as you can see, he gets down to 1300 He just buys no head armor, utility, and he's actually going to get dropped in AWP. So, what happened, if we take a look at the tab here, NBK was able to drop the AWP because... He got an ace with the FAMAS. That's how they were able to afford the AWP. Normally, they wouldn't have been able to, and Kenny S would have most likely just stuck with the FAMAS. But since A, he died, and B, because uh, NBK got an ace, they were able to afford the AWP. And so going into this round, Kenny is actually going to be going B, and he's going to be solo. And notice how when he's solo B, he smokes it off and then takes the angle there. Because he knows that they're probably going to be smoking the doorway and then eventually pushing up. So now he goes into a more passive hold. Now if he were to go into checker, or if he were just going to continue holding this angle, he would have most likely had somebody support him in vent. So that when they, if they tried to split B or just push B directly, after he took that first shot, he'd be able to fall back and this player in vent would be able to support him. They wouldn't be able to wrap checker on him. And if they tried to run straight out the door, the player in vent could still get the angle on them. And also, if the player in vent throws a flash and it breaks the vent, it's going to cause players to look toward it and that'll actually make them be actually be blind from the flash that he throws so there's a lot of player that event player there's a lot of things the vent player can do to support him and so now he's just kind of sitting in b he's holding for people to come out of the smoke he doesn't expect anybody to come out check or dry so he's just holding for somebody to do a 2k i'm sort of 
And at this point, he knows that they could be checker, but he doesn't really expect it. And so now he's just kind of flipping between the two angles that they could peek him from. And even if they did peek close, he knows that he's good enough to hit that shot. So let's just speed this up a little bit here. Eventually, he ends up rotating. Uh, it's because, I think... Hang on. Let me slow this down for a second. Okay. I think his teammate boosted over at the beginning yeah i think his teammate was boosted over at the beginning here and he was just crouching here and then he eventually went for the play late round and then he he saw bomb uh sitting right outside of a main so that caused kenny s to kind of rotate and then he ended up just going back into heaven because he realized that it was most likely going to be an a play and then when they didn't immediately commit after that that's when he rotated back towards heaven and let me go back to kenny s so now they're going up for the B execute. It's smart for Kenny S to kind of go heaven because they're most likely going to smoke off uh, tree without a doubt. And it gives operas a lot more versatility. So he gets that first shot. And notice how he mollies right here so that they have to cross through headshot. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either molly, and this was if he's staying heaven. He ends up going CT. So the molly was just to delay it more so that they had to run headshot. But if you molly in the middle of the site, uh, let me just slow this down to like, zero basically so if if you molly oh no i hate this about demos but if you molly right there then they have to run around here and you can actually hold an angle from heaven to just toward headshot here and if you molly headshot through the crack then you can just hold the angle toward the middle of sight this prevents people from getting on the site without taking damage or fighting your op and so a lot of times oppers will molly this and then hold the angle on the headshot to get an easy kill there and so I'll just keep this at one fourth for a sec while I switch back. And so he ends up going back to heaven. He seems to be a little bit indecisive here. I'll turn this back up to normal speed. And yeah, as you can see, he holds that headshot angle, just like I was just talking about. But I believe, yep, bomb just crosses right there. He was a little bit too late. And... He's going to be posting up on B main. He's going to make sure that the, there isn't a player B main holding his teammate's um, tree. So he wanted to eliminate this angle here. He wanted to eliminate this angle here for that T's would be, would be able to take on his teammates. So he was holding that with the op because if they were holding it, he would have been able to see his shoulder and take the kill. But AZ ended up playing from pit, which is not a very common position. And he was able to hit Kenny S down to 25. So he ends up falling back because of that. So now he goes for a wall bang there because he knows that there's people checker. He heard them run there. And now his team's taking sight. And at this point, I expect him to cover checker. Yep, he hits the wall bang there. And he's actually going to be the one defusing because he's one of the two players with the kit. And he knows config has to peek him. Config ends up peeking wide. It was actually a really smart play from Config, if you didn't see what he did there. Config, Kenny S was thinking, okay, he's going to peek here because he basically has to to see the bomb. But what Config ends up doing is actually kind of going here and then wide swinging to get a view on bomb. And that really caught Kenny S out because he was double scoped on this angle. But again, that was just a 1v1 situation. Not too much he can do there himself. And he actually ends up picking it up quite a bit at the end of this game. I believe he ends up going 31 and 13. So... Yeah, next round, I believe he's going to full eco so that he can uh, save for an op. They take a pause here. And I'm just going to skip forward through this pause. Seems like it was technical because it's still paused. It most likely was because this was at EPL's uh, Season 5 Finals. So they actually end up force buying here. He still has 750 left in the bank. Notice how none of the G2 players wasted money on head armor except MBK, but you know what? That's okay. But notice how none of them, they're saving that extra money for, actually, they're on a complete force here. I'm kind of surprised Kenny didn't end up buying a scout, but maybe he's comfortable with the CZ. Okay, so he ends up playing quad. He's jump spotting so he can get a good nade in. That's basically all he's useful for in this round It's that, and then he can play the close corner right on default if they end up pushing A. But now his teammate dies in middle, uh, NBK dies there as well, and now Kenny is basically alone on a site. He hears the guy op open squeaky door, and he kind of gets fucked because of the draw time there with the CZ. Again, that's not really Kenny's fault where he dies, 
And so I want to get to the more juicy stuff. To him opping again. So this is just a full eco. Full USPs. He's hide, hiding quad. They have a bit of a rough start at CT side. Going to be honest. They don't get a lot done CT side. But T side, they really amp it up. So here, he's just kind of playing this headshot angle. Trying to get a kill. And he just ends up getting taken out by the superior AK. Once again, just an eco round. Nothing too special there. And here we go. Okay. So let's see what happens here. It doesn't look like he's going to be going for an aggressive peek. He's just going to be going to quad. And notice how he jumped on the ledge. He's outside on this. It's an off angle so that T's when they peek. If they peek the headshot angle, they, they can only body shot him. It's not very smart for him to crouch, going to be honest. But... Uh, if he's standing up, it's a very good off angle. Now he moves to this tiny angle near Squeaky. Now, if you're peeking him as a T, this is a really hard shot to hit on an opper. Because you're most likely either going to hit it through this wall or through this wall if you end up hitting him. Just because of bullet inaccuracy. So even if you hit him and you dink him with an AK, it might not kill him necessarily. Uh, just because of the wall. So this is a really good spot to play with the op. The only issue is that if you have to flick and they aren't like jiggle peeking this, if they just jump across, they can get across pretty much scot-free. Then you have to worry about kind of backing up, but he does have the player forklift to support him. And they actually have three players toward the A bomb site, and they're doing a gamble stack toward A. And so, as you can see, as his teammate peeking it, then he's rotating off because uh, body gets smoked off at CT. And I believe they're going to end up just saving here. They don't really have anything that they can win in this round, unless if they end up ended up getting lucky and them coming back to A. But doesn't look like that's going to happen. And. MSL is in mid main. He hears Kenny running. And that's going to basically alert all of the North players that they're saving. So Kenny S running there probably wasn't the brightest idea. MBK had walked all the way to here. And now they're just kind of playing this crossfire here. And it's a little bit interesting that Body's kind of alone in CT. He probably should have come back toward A site and just tripled up and squeaky with these guys. Kenny does end up taking that free kill. NBK gets the other one. So notice how they had kind of had a bait and switch going. So that when Kenny got this kill, uh, he could completely fall off the angle if he wanted to. And then uh, Shox could have got him if they pushed him squeaky. But then NBK was also completely set up uh, right outside of A main here. So that as soon as they were focused on Kenny, he'd be able to get this kill here. So once again, it's just really good uh, setups that they're running to be able to trade effectively. And so they did manage to save four of their guns, uh, as you can see here. And they're going to be on a full buy, basically. Just limited utility uh, on a few of the players, but besides that, they should be good to go. And Kenny is actually deciding not to buy nades. And the reason for this, and I see a lot of people not realize that when they're opping, they sometimes need to do this. Notice how all the other players basically have full utility. NBK just can't afford it because he had to drop a teammate. Body is full utility. Apex is full utility. Kenny S doesn't so that if he dies and they win the round, he will be able to buy himself an op. Or if he can't, he'll be able to be very close to it and drop a teammate and this teammate can drop him an op. Notice how he's making sure he has enough money. Now, if you have a great bank going then I would say it's not necessary, like you can buy the utility that you need. But notice how he only has $2,300, and yes, utility can be the difference between winning and losing a round. But I think in this situation, with their economy being this low, and I'll just bring this up quickly, notice how low their economy is. Kenny is the player with the most amount of money. If they lose this, he gets $1,400, he's at $3,700. They only need to single eco and they can have an op again. So just one save, they get another uh, extra money. He can at least glass cannon, maybe light body armor. However, if he ends up buying utility, he's down to about 1800 1600 somewhere in there. He has no chance of buying an op, even if they single eco. He won't even be able to glass cannon, really, uh, if he ends up buying full utility and a kit. So that's the reason he doesn't end up buying that much. So he... Gets he was going to peek squeaky here, except he got flashed off the angle here. Uh, he got flashed off by either Magic Boy or AZ, so he was not going to peek this angle blind. But if he did, he probably would have been able to catch out MSL. So since he's blind, he's going to just end up playing this angle in front of squeaky and then rely on his teammate kind of covering his squeaky uh, a little bit after. 
And so here he's going to start to back up there, and there he goes. And then he has his teammate at quad, NBK. And he rotates into quad, and they're playing a double quad setup right now. So soon... Okay, this is a bit of a weird setup that they're doing. So Kenny has repositions. And he's actually going to be supporting in mid. His teammate dies B once again, and they lost B sight. I'm not commenting too much on the IG uh, in-game leading here because that's not what Kenny S does. He's the opper, so they're gonna most likely end up saving here again. I pretty much, I'm, yeah. They just save. They just double save the CT. There's only two of them that end up living. I remember this, and only Kenny's alive by the end of the round. So they actually did a lot of economic damage to the T team, but sadly they're already on a five win streak, so they got plenty of money because they had four alive, four alive, three alive, uh, only one alive there, but two alive there, and so they have a lot of money. So this is going to be another pause coming in, most likely for G2. And they're going to be, okay, what can we what can we get going here? So they end up rolling with the double off with Shox and Kenny. And if I remember correctly, this works out very well for them. So they have Shox upping B, and Kenny S is actually going to flash himself into A main. And he's going to post up on the far angle there, while Body is actually going to get flashed in and peaks the far angle. So I'm going to show you what this looks like from the enemy perspective, because this is a really good play uh from that g2 does a lot on cash and this is one of the reasons that they're actually able to pick up a few rounds is because of this aggression so what happens is kenny s kind of wide flashes it here and i'm pretty sure that's just to get the players behind the box and then i believe another pot flash comes in and that lands a little bit more towards here to blind the players that are kind of just more in the open so we can watch this again uh they might do a different variation this round but I do want to show this, and I forgot there was a pause there. So yeah, as you can see, they have three flashes ending up coming in. Body gets that uh, from the third, from the second wide flash. And then Kenny S is able to post up on this angle here with an op. A rifler has basically no chance of winning this, and that was actually uh, somebody opping as well. So uh, once again, Kenny is just kind of wrecking house here. These aggressions that G2 does, and specifically what Kenny S does, is what he's famous for. And notice how even though he had the op, he let his teammate swing wide and clear the box while he held the far back angle. This was the same thing that happened on that second round where Kenny ended up dying because he had a FAMAS. But basically all that happened was Kenny S posted up on the door and he held uh, a tighter angle since he had the op this time. And then his teammates wide swings and kills the two players at the boxes. I believe in the second round it was NBK and in this round it was uh, Body that wide swung. But either way, that great aggression, even if it's not the op going in first, it's a great way to go about things. So now he's just going for a bunch of wall banks. He ends up holding this. I don't think he's going to see anybody the rest of the round. Yep, there we go. Okay, so they're still rolling with the double op here. And now we're going to see if he goes for any aggression again. So he's going for the squeaky peek. And he eventually will get the info that nobody's actually in squeaky. Because they're all heading toward B. Shox ends up taking out one, but then he goes down. And then config just gets a great double entry. And yeah, G2 were losing B a lot this half. Nothing Kenny could really do here. And again, they're just going to try to save as much as they can. And notice how North also saves because their economy got really hurt by this one round uh, where all five CTs were alive. And they're actually going to be able to buy again because they saved three players and five people were alive in the last round they won. And so now Kenny's going to be solo A and they're going to be stacking the B bomb site. This is a good call because they've been losing B a lot, and leaving Kenny on A it leaves him a, a lot of room to just kind of work. And even though he doesn't have a lot of support, Shoxy here is just holding his mid down for him, and he ends up rotating toward A. So Kenny gets the first pick there, and then he's worried about highway. He knows that they can come up highway on him because Shox rotated the truck. And so he completely falls off quad. He mollies that to completely delay the push. It buys time for the rotate. Notice how almost all of the CTs are in the area now, and the terrorists aren't able to enter the bomb site because that molly prevents them completely. MSL actually tried to jump up onto the box, but then he just got punished by uh, Apex. So now Kenny pushes toward Fork. He's looking for more kills here. He hears him planting on default. I mean, he wasn't planting. That's my bad. But he ends up just getting kind of killed there. He loses the gunfight. And, yeah. He did his job, though. He held down the bomb site. He got a kill. And he prevented them from planting for about 15 seconds. And that's all you can really hope for when you're soloing a bomb site. 
So there, they did the aggressive play again, and I'm actually going to go back. I skipped, for, or I went forward a little bit too far. And it doesn't work this time because Kenny actually misses the shot. Had he hit this shot, this round may have turned out differently. They still had to worry about that player there uh, coming out. But let's just go, and then let's go on fourth speed. So Kenny is going to flash again. And notice how uh, AZ is already up to the box. So they th they're throwing deep flashes because this is a little bit late. They didn't have very good spawns. And so body's going to swing wide again. And here, Kenny S is posted up on the same angle. It's the same aggression that they constantly do. Now, Kenny S is actually going to miss this shot here because he's the guy's going to peek the doorway, but now he's waiting for the guy at the box to peek. And so he just misses the shot there. He overflicks. He gets stutter stepped. Apex wide swings. And then uh, he actually goes down from the player. Um, what's it called? From the player also in a man. And then Kenny S kind of backs up there. He's trying to peek the player squeaky because they know they open the squeaky door. Open the squeaky door. But in all honesty, he probably should have continued holding this aggressive angle and relied on NBK to hold that angle because if you look, NBK is already there. So that was probably just most uh, most likely a lack of communication. And so now shocks all alone on B, not really able to do anything. Let's skip to the next round. Uh, let's see if he saves this up for Kenny. He does not. And, uh, Shox is tilted, apparently. Interesting. It's gonna stay like that for the round. Okay, and we're back. Is Shox still tilted? No, he is not. Okay. So, Kenny ends up buying Deagle Armor. Notice how he saves enough so that he'll be able to buy an op, even if he only does get 1400 here, 5400. He doesn't need head armor. He's good to go. And he can definitely wreck shop with the Deagle. So he's just going to be playing these kind of long range angles and now he's actually kind of hiding. Nothing really going on here. It's going to fast forward a bit. End up going mid. And notice how Kenny actually goes to truck to play at crossfire with uh, Apex. They're kind of banking on the fact that they're not going to go A main. And... As you can see, as soon as they were about to peek, uh, okay, I'll just go back and show this, since I don't think Kenny's probably going to get anything done here. Actually, maybe. I'll go back and show that during the freeze time. Okay, so notice how he walks out here. They don't, they have no idea he's going to be there, and he ends up finding a nice cool indication before eventually going down, but he ended up actually hurting uh the tease economically which is all he could have really hoped for there but anyway going back to this apex was kind of here and he was crouched and he was holding a man he was just holding it to peak and then kenny s was holding this angle here so apex couldn't have gotten peaked while kenny was holding this and then as soon as they peaked kenny then apex could have wide swung around the corner and gone for that kill and that's just once again it's sort of a beta switch bait and switch peaking on contact it's something that a lot of teams failed to do at lower levels and i see a lot of uh offers as well like they don't realize that they can also be the bait like they can take that first shot and fall back and leave the other player to kind of clean up from another angle you can do it the other way as well with rifles so right now apex is holding close and kenny is holding his boost i actually really like doing this uh personally i like to actually jump on the rail because then you can kind of catch them as they're jumping up sometimes if you're far enough up but since he's opping and not with a rifle then I can see why you wouldn't want to do that. If anybody can explain to me how I did this, where I just teleported up here to get that angle, please do, because I have no idea how to do that. Anyway. Now, can I, they're both kind of holding this angle here. Apex is most likely going to be playing sort of an anti-flash here, so that if they flash out, he'll be able to get the kill. Kenny ends up rotating toward A because they are pushing out on the B bomb site. Kills AZ there, and now he's just holding this cross. You know he he knows he has bomb down there. He just sees it again. He knows that they're gonna have to push through that smoke. His teammate goes down. He ends up punishing Cajun, who tried to push the smoke to get the bomb. And so Kenny just gets completely blinded, has to fall back. And he's kind of lucky that Magix didn't catch him out there. But now he has the crossfire with shocks, and they have full control of the bomb. He's checking his back, making sure he isn't gonna get flanked. He flashes for shocks to peek, but shocks has already peaked. Probably a bit of miscommunication there. He falls back to Z and ends up getting the final kill. 
So that was just a really good play from him. He realized he got bombed down. A bit of a misplay from North, actually, having bomb push out uh, kind of in this area here. Seems like they were trying to wrap around the bomb site this way, uh, which is definitely not normal. I think there was a smoke down toward quad. So interesting decision making from North. And so Kenny is going to be soloing the A bomb site again. Uh, this is a really good IGL call as well because uh, North just got destroyed at A. And what G2 is actually doing is they're doing a double aggressive push in B main. And what this allows them to do is get that info. And even if they die, they still have shocks opping in checker. And they have no idea he's here. And now he's actually, he does end up just kind of fluffing this i believe yeah so he ends up kind of trying to go around them which and then the door ends up being smoked and he isn't able to get too much done but the idea of this was really really smart for them to do because it allows them to try and catch those players out in b main with the double peak and it leaves them with another third player there while kenny s is able to anchor a because they know he can anchor a and i also want to point out that kenny was holding the angle on the box and he's probably just going to end up saving here yep so he's holding the angle on the box here and this is a great spot to play especially when you're solo if you have mid control because you can hold this angle here take the shot then they have to be watching for both here and here and so what will happen usually is uh, an opera will jump off here wait about three seconds and then peek here because at that point the rifler is going to be worried about this angle here so then you can peek here catch them out and then uh you can also if nobody else has peeked yet you can just hold this angle this is a great angle to hold as an opera because if they don't smoke it and they, they're trying to clear different angles and sorry the observer thing keeps opening tab but if you're just holding that angle there it's a great spot to get some uh some free kills and then you can just play around this box and most teams are going to molly this and not try and push out toxic it was it's a really weird thing to do that north did the round before and then kenny s has a molly that he can throw here when he's anchoring it and so he's all set and so now it's the last round of the half his team is completely broke he ends up buying a pistol for himself which is a little bit a little bit odd in most situations, this player would actually be dropping the pistol for somebody else so that they could get more utility, uh, but that was most likely just not communicated, and yeah, because like if he ended up dropping the pistol to somebody else, then maybe Apex or Body could have picked up another kit or some more utility. Uh, well, Body actually has a UMP. He, yeah, Kenny also could have dropped a UMP to somebody, but like I said, a lot of people weren't abusing the UMP in this tournament because it was nerfed recently if you don't know about that nerf it was just a uh, damage fall off nerf so the farther you are away then basically the less damage it'll do uh yeah it just damage fall off affects it a little bit more so now they're most likely going to be going for an aggressive a play here kenny s is posted up on the angle he's their only op and they're just playing close with pistols on a while leaving kenny to solo b b stacks don't work very well on this map in most situations unless if you're going for a fast b main play so they're leaving their solo upper toward b and they're just kind of grouping up on a and as soon as they open this door i want to i haven't seen this round from this perspective yet i've only watched kenny s's demo so far interesting uh, interesting that they decided to open the door I think G2 opened the door there, and that's just something special. Either way, here's Kenny L, or Kenny S. I'm Kenny L. Nobody's going to get the joke, but that's okay. Kenny S actually kills him with the molly there. He's just kind of leaving himself in the open here. He has to go for something insane. He's actually going to get flanked from Z very, very shortly. He's just going for some wall banks. It's all he can really hope for. He has zero time. Bomb gets mollied. And at this point, he's just going for some style points. He doesn't have time to defuse. And, yeah. I mean, nothing he can really do there. It's a 1v4. He was all the way at B by the time they had the bomb site. And, yeah. And, believe it or not, Kenny S only dies, I think, two more times the entire game. They destroy from here on out. So, let's look at it. It's either two or three more times that he dies. So as soon as this match pauses up, we can take a look. 
Alright, so Kenny has a sense of buying armor. MBK has a smoke and a molly. End up finding that entry. They should be chasing this player down there. Shox ends up finding the kill. And now Kenny S is going to fall back and hold the flank. He has the long range weapon, so he's going to be holding most likely a longer angle. He is playing against USPs though, so it's basically even in terms of that gunfight. And he's just holding super passive. He's holding it enough so that his teammates won't get flanked by a CT running here. Like his teammate and checker isn't going to get flanked. But also, they won't most likely check that. So now he jiggle peeks heaven, spots one there. Interesting that he's still peeking it, but he was actually he, he was double peeking that with shocks, I believe. So uh, it was a good play there because he saw only one was heaven, and heaven you can only really peek one at a time. So since they were both peeking, it was a actually good decision to do so. So now, they're in an anti-eco here. Body just gets one digs in mid. They end up mollying Sandbag. Smart play from Kenny. He hits the headshot on the occasion. He goes down. One for one trade. Not what you want on an anti-eco. His teammate just kind of wide swung mid. But I think he had an AK. So I guess it was just a nice shot from Body. And now he's just holding the smoke for his teammate. Making sure he doesn't get pushed. Making sure nobody does the ESCA strat or the pug strat. Where people jump out of the smoke and go right here. And try and kind of get you but that's okay nobody does it so he's continuing to hold his team z uh it's kind of interesting that he's actually holding z considering apex is so far out but apex yeah okay apex wasn't peaked from z so there we go apex ends up getting the kill after kenny peaks him i thought apex was actually up top on up top on the box so now kenny is going to be pushing in with his team kind of blocks shocks a little bit there but that's okay i think it's actually mbk that he ended up blocking but that was just because they were double peeking a little bit too close to each other and now notice for the love of god when you're a terrorist plant here please it plants for basically everything that it plants for b main basically but you can also walk out of here like uh i believe it was config did earlier in the game so please plant there there's no reason not to plant here, because, A, it's just the safest planting here, even safer, because somebody can't run out headshot and kill you when you're planting here. Your teammates can cover you a hell of a lot more. And, B, you only need to you need to be the only player on site. If you plant here, you have to defend from on the bomb site. And if you're planting here, yeah, you're super exposed, so don't do that unless if you have full control of, like, tree and stuff. But, again, I, I don't understand why people don't do that. So here, shocks. This was a huge misplay. That's a no-no. You can't you can't solo peek mid against a potential full eco. You know they're gonna be full eco, so a potential rush with an AK. If anything, he probably should have jump spotted here. But they only lost one gun. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but still, you want to keep the economy as strong as you can, especially on T or on CT side. But still, on T side, it's almost just as important. I actually have an economy guide coming out soon. Next episode of the Endgame Leading Series. It's tracking your opponent's economy. Because a lot of people suck at it, gonna be honest. Okay. So they're just doing a default checker take here. They smoke the door, molly that. There is a player in vent. They don't have a molly for vent, it looks like. And Apex doesn't even clear it. Kenny S is already on site. He tried to pull a Stewie. He ends up getting the kill. And now there's just the offer back site. Takes out the bomb for some reason. And he ends up going down to him. So, Kenny S's decision to push through that solo was definitely very questionable. Because with that smoke there, there's not a whole lot you can do when you get out solo. He only got the kill because there was somebody that just don't happen to come out heaven. But this vent player, he could have been there to trade a little bit quicker. And then they could have even boosted Vent after that and kind of rotated into mid through there. But he kind of just left himself to be alone pushing the bomb site. And he pushed out through this smoke when he had bomb. And he was just kind of sitting here with bomb. If he dies here, even if it's still like a 3v3, it's basically game over. Like there's almost nothing you can do with T's there. They had about a minute left. They'd have to push the bomb site then. And he just kind of left shocks in an awkward position here. 
he is actually able to pick up the bomb. I just kind of want to see how Shock plays this. Interesting that he didn't try and go for this aggressive play in the CT, which a lot of teams, a lot of players would have done. But AZ was there, and he was actually holding for it. So it's a good thing he didn't do that. So now we can just watch the Clutch Master lose the Clutch. Okay. I still think it would have been better to go headshot. You can play a lot better off headshot in 1v2s. I don't like getting going to that back box because you can get yourself kind of stuck there. But hey, he's the pro player. Okay, so Kenny S is just going to be holding this angle here. Notice how when they smoke it, he's holding this angle here. And then he is so far over so that if somebody peeks up here... They still can't even see him, really, until he eventually moved back. But if people jumped up here and were boosted, they wouldn't really be able to see him since he's in this very far back corner, just holding the edge of the smoke. So now he gets boosted up here, just clearing out Z. He ends up mollying Sandbag. He doesn't really peek it, which is a little bit questionable because if somebody was holding the angle from here, they could have kind of taken his head off a little bit, especially if they had an AK or an AWP. But, alas... Very minute detail. So he ends up smoking Z, which is a good play. And he's looking for this trade on the guy Vent, who killed his teammate. He ended up wide swinging when his teammate died, but at that point, the player had already fell back through this vent and was gone. So now, they're in a bit of a tough spot here. Kenny is carrying pretty hard. And... Okay, I don't like how far Kenny is away from MBK, because MBK looks like he's about to peak, and Kenny isn't in really close enough to trade. Okay, now he is. So he's just going to post up Heaven and cover it for his team. There we go. He gets the kill, and his teammate, who was headshot, manages to kill the guy on sight. Actually, Body managed to kill the guy on sight. But either way, now he's just holding his teams back. They have somebody holding vents, so he's holding this long flank, and the CTs are actually going to end up saving here. 3v4 on the B-bomb site. Not really possible with the, the positions the CTs were in, uh, especially when they still have this lead. It's better to just keep their economy relatively strong. So they're going to be going for a force here, the CTs, and I believe Kenny S is just going to go for this B-pick since he knows that they'll, they're only going to be able to field one off, and he sees the guy cross checker, and... Now they they have the info. Kenny S is holding the angle. And Wow. This is messy. I see he's had a good pop flash come in there, and that's why Kenny S wasn't able to get the kill. And they're still continuing to aggress. Kenny S is pretty overexposed right now. Kinda left himself open to a lot of angles jumping over that box. I guess he was just looking for the trade. And he Molly's headshot here, probably so that. Yeah, so that MBK can just peek, and MBK is 1 HP. I'd really like to see them do my vent boost. Come on, pro teams, you should be doing this. Nobody's going to expect it. They're just going to be like, oh, where the fuck did they go? And then not realize what you did, and then boom, you kill them. Come on, guys. So they're continuing to aggress onto this B site. Again... Not something I would agree with. They end up getting the kill. There's two players having... Kenny does a nice jumping peek right here. If you jump up here when you're peeking heaven and you nail the timing on the jump and the shot, then you're going to be able to kill anybody that's holding this headshot into heaven. Cause, or holding this headshot angle onto sight. Because also, if they're holding the angle t more toward uh, like right there, just like the pixel angle, you'll still be able to see them, even if they can't see you, just because of how angles work in CSGO, and you'll still be able to get that kill. That's a really nice peek from Kenny. And again, Magic Squoy is going to be forced to save. I just want to point out that in this game, it's a little bit different from the old Kenny S. And I'm just going to slow this down a lot and just kind of explain why. So, in the old the old version of Kenny S, Kenny would have been going for the super aggressive peaks when he old op, uh, like specifically the old Inferno. Uh, he was known for going for those insanely aggressive peaks. 
Now, Cash isn't the best for that mat. For that, I'm gonna be honest. It's not like Inferno where you can go mid car, banana, or banana is car, uh, apartments, uh, even T boiler, and just kind of look in. He's playing more the supportive op role on this team, especially on this map. And what he's doing is he's holding the further back angles. And he, a lot of teams don't realize this that when you have the opera holding back these further angles, uh, like right here, for example, or I'll use the CT example. Notice how he's not the one that's going for this aggressive peak. And this is something that's sort of new with the new Kenny S that I think a lot of people are kind of missing. Is that he's going for these more holding back peaks while his teammates are going for this aggression. Because he's now on a team where all of his teammates are so skilled. He's playing with the likes of Shox and NBK and Apex. They're insane. And Body now is has proven himself as a good player. And... Ooh, looks like you might get flanked by Magisk here. No. Body goes down instead. Apex gets the trade. I think Kenny tried to wall bang above him. And now he just goes back to holding this angle. Notice how on this default, he's not going for anything overly aggressive. A lot of hoppers feel like they need to make the opening. They don't realize that there's so many other options that you can do as a team and that some operas just feel like it's their job to find the opening every single round and while it's great if you can and if you can play that super aggressive role but kenny s i feel like just hasn't been feeling it as much lately and so he's letting his teammates do that entering and he's able to get those kills on the, where he knows the cts are gonna be peeking from just a little bit later he's playing it so wisely and i think it's even proving that he's doing better like this than he was in like 2014 in, his, in the old version of him now he actually goes down here. I think he got wide peaked from quad. I'm not 100% sure. But hey. He's only died two times since the half. So. Can't yell at him too much. Okay, so here he's going to be posting up a main once again. Notice, once again, he's holding this corner while his teammates are pushing up and making sure that nobody else is jumping on the box and doing other shenanigans. And now Apex... Actually, I think that was a spam through the smoke. Yeah, that was a spam through the smoke. You most likely heard him jumping onto Toxic. So Kenny is going to be clearing out Shroud for his team. Once again, he's not going super aggressive. He's playing the more passive angle. He's going to end up smoking Forklift. And he's kind of pushing him with his team. Okay, so notice how when the Riflers are going out. Okay, so here, here he's going aggressive. He realizes his two teammates have died on site. He needs to make something happen. They actually get the trade onto the bomb site. Now Kenny is holding this single here. Uh, he should have heard the guy cat. He... Okay, I don't know what I heard then. I, I could have swore I heard him on cat, but guess not. He went for the peak and just ends up dying. I think he uh, got wide swung on by Cajun just as soon as he was wide swinging. So, as an offer. Maybe not the best idea. It was a 3v2. I don't know why he decided to go so aggressive. He could have just kept holding this angle. And they had con control of the bomb site. So, a little bit questionable. Now, let's see if Shoxy can clutch it out. No, he cannot. And the round goes to north. So, now, once again, Kenny S. Oh. I think he ends up going 31 and 13, not 31 and 11. Anyway, he only dies one more time this entire game. And so he is going to be going into Squeaky. Just kidding. I was watching Shocks. I don't know. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, once again the hell okay he's holding this angle here then he eventually wide swings and peaks that angle there just to make sure ct is going to try something cheeky and he's just holding passively here he's letting the riflers work their map control this is something really important that you need to do on a default you just need to maintain a main control you don't need to do something insanely aggressive like i kind of mentioned if you don't have the opera get boosted then you can just kind of have him playing right here i mentioned this in the cash setups video or you can just have a rifler kind of sitting behind this box with the opera supporting him. There's so many things that you can do. So here, Kenny's going through this peak. His teammates are basically already out mid. He molly sandbag just to make sure nobody's there. And he drops the bomb to Apex so that he can... Uh, no, they're actually rotating out. Okay. So I 
believe... Yeah, okay, so now they know that config is opping on B. They heard the op shot. MSL goes down, and config actually is able to take the kill. Kenny S, again, is just holding this angle while his teammates are finding the openings. Because he, he knows that North are going to try to do this. He knows that CTs are going to try and make the hero play here in heaven. Because there's not really much else you can do when you're smoked off CT. So he knows that they're going to try and peek this. So once again, he's just holding the angle, letting his teammates move in and take the bomb site with the rifles in the closer range areas. And he's just finding these kills every single time. He's playing it so wisely because he's just holding passively where he knows the CTs are going to have to peek. So this is a pause coming in, most likely from north. And now we're going to see aggressive Kenny. So had they not smoked that, probably could have found the kill, just because it's Kenny. Uh, or if anybody tried to cross, he probably could have seen them just before the smoke pop, because he got there just in time. And so I don't like how kind of... Yeah, okay, so they... Magic's boy was able to swing in there. None of them really had their guns out. If he didn't flash in, I'm pretty sure he probably could have gotten both. But I guess, even, yeah, even if he was just playing behind this smoke here, he probably could have gotten both eventually because Kenny S wasn't really posted up on anything. He kind of just had his tech nine out. I think he was going to set up a couple nades. So here on the bomb site, he hears him, takes a nice shot there. Is exposed to truck, but his teammate ends up killing that guy. And he, I think he got the call that this guy's going to be a main. So he's holding that angle there. Once again, that's the off angle I talked about earlier. Uh, people are going to just be walking right in front of your crosshair. And they're not going to be really clearing that up for an op. Or jiggle peeking it, should I say. Because they're exposed to so many other angles when doing so. So once again, just a really smart play from Kenny S. It's almost like he sees a professional player. So he ends up boosting his teammates and once again just posting up on a main. He spots that guy and actually takes out AZ, who ends up jumping across. And he was just holding all of A control. Notice how he was switching between Squeaky and a main. He knew they were on eco. He knew they might try and go for something aggressive there. They end up not going aggressive in Squeaky, but he does end up finding the kills. Uh, looks like somebody was going for the uh, body wall bang. And it was body going for the body wall being. Why am I not surprised? All right. So his teammate basically already has fully main control. So now he's just kind of playing anti-flash just in case they try to flash through smoke. He's going to smoke off forklift once again. And I believe he also is going to flash out. So there's a counter flash from the CTs. That's why usually somebody's playing anti-flash. He actually flashes onto the bomb site as well. And he also flashes into fork and finds a nice kill there. Basically, actually not really securing around for his team. I thought they won the trades on the bomb site. So here, once he, okay, he's holding the rotations again. He's not letting them come in. And so now there's one fence. He's probably going to get killed by the guy squeaky because he has no idea he's there. No, his teammate actually goes down to the guy squeaky. Let's see if Kenny can clutch this out. Looks for the first, but he ends up getting taken out. They double peek him once again. Unless we hit the immediate Tech 9 headshot, there's not a whole lot he can do there. Even if he had the AWP and he took the first shot, the other CT would have peeked him by the time he had a chance to do anything. <sighs> Sorry for yawning, boys. I just finished my first day of finals, so this is my study break, actually, before my English exam that I have to study for. In bio. Anyway, yeah, sorry for no strats on day this weekend. That's why there wasn't one. I had uh, final exams, and I have them through Wednesday. I don't know when I'm going to upload this. I'm probably going to upload this Tuesday. So, yeah, sorry about that, boys and, and ladies. 1.9% to my viewer base is female. I just looked at this. So yeah, nice play by Kenny there. Just a nice shot. Interesting. Okay, so he's the one actually pushing the bomb site this time because he has the bomb. Normally, he'd be the one holding like heaven and such because he doesn't have the bomb, but he just opened a bomb this time realized he has to get it down. And they're going to end up winning this round. And the last round of the half. 
match, I should say. Oh boy. Okay, so Kenny S ends up boosting them. Looks like he was trying to get boosted himself, but he just posts up on A main. Once again, he's just holding down this A push. He's just playing his spot on the default. Nothing too, like, snazzy that he's trying to do. He just ends up planting the bomb and winning the round because his teammates are doing the, are getting all the entries for him. He's just getting those impact kills that are securing the round for his team. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful for any offers on cash, especially if you're trying to find your spot as a more passive opper or a supportive opper. He, on Cash specifically, is really good at that. On Inferno, he's definitely more that flashy style type player, specifically. Uh, he didn't do so well in this series, I believe. He didn't perform at his best. He still went positive, I think, but he didn't do super well. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed Inside the Mind of Kenny S. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of the night.